Hey students, I just wanted to go over a, a really quick video on the components of GDP to try and save us a little bit of time in class so we can get our hands dirty with some data and also to uh, have some time to go over real and nominal GDP uh, very thoroughly before your, your, your quiz. So this is going to be a really quick video just going over the four components of GDP. You can find this information in your textbook as well. And as always, you can come into office hours or ask me questions before or after class. So the BEA, the Bureau of Economic Analysis, divides the GDP into four major categories, which is consumption, investment, government purchases, and net exports, as you can see here. The reason why we do this is so we can better understand the fluctuations in the business cycle. And so we've just started talking about what that business cycle is. It's very important for us to uh, understand why we enter into um, you know, these recessions and come out into these expansions. The first one is consumption. That's spending by households on goods and services, but it doesn't include spending on new homes. Spending on new homes is gonna go into investment, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. Consumption does have some subcategories where it has services, non-durable goods, and durable goods. Durable goods would be those that you're going to spend a good amount of money on and they're going to last you a decent amount of time. So think of cars, think of computers, uh, things like that. Whereas non-durable goods, you uh, would have your food and your clothing, things that uh, you're gonna buy more often. Services are exactly what they sound like. Those are services, your haircuts, your education, your financial services. In the United States, we are a service-based economy. And what that means is that uh, the majority of our consumption, which consumption overall makes up about 68% of our GDP, uh, and services makes up about 45% of all of GDP as well. We are a huge service-based economy. The second one is investment. There's a lot of interesting things to talk about when it comes to investments. So let's start with the definition. The definition is just the spending by firms on new factories, office buildings, machineries, additions to inventories, but also by households and firms on new houses. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, I don't want you to think of this economic investment as financial investment. It's not stocks and bonds. Remember, stocks and bonds are not included in GDP. This as it says, is spending by firms on these new factories, office buildings, machineries, inventories. What this means is think about it as uh, I'm a business and I want to buy something that's going to help me produce other goods and services. Inventories is where I produce something, but I don't sell it in this period. But we know that GDP has to include everything produced in this period, so we're going to include it in investment as inventories. Later on, it'll come out as inventories once it's consumed. We also include new houses here because new houses, it's very volatile um, and it's usually done as some sort of investment. It does gain uh, some value, hopefully, as, uh, as more and more people are demanding housing in, in areas. And so we throw that one in here as well. The term volatile, meaning that it changes a lot, it goes up and it goes down. Uh, investment is the most volatile and the one that changes the most component of GDP. Our third one is government purchases, which is spending by federal, state, and local governments on goods and services. Notice that last part. It has to be spending on goods and services. So this is different from the total government spending. Total government spending would be you're spending on goods and services, but you're also uh, paying interest on old debt. Uh, you're giving out uh, different subsidies to maybe businesses or individuals. Net exports, which is in the news a lot right now, is just total exports minus total imports. Exports are the goods and services that are produced inside of our own country and then transferred out. And imports are goods and services that are produced outside of the country and transferred in. We're hearing a lot right now about trade. So we're going to talk about that later on in this course. One thing I want you to really understand is that having a negative net exports is not necessarily a bad thing. All that means is that we are able to, we have an economy that we're able to purchase things from abroad and not uh, have to worry about producing everything, which is the comparative advantage that we'll also talk about when we get more into trade. Just one last thing really quickly. Uh, currently, as of the making of this video, the US has $2.57 trillion in exports, $3.12 trillion in imports. Uh, net exports makes up about 3% of the overall uh, economy and it is does have a negative sign in this expenditure approach of GDP but as discussed before not necessarily a bad thing 
So we currently have this trade deficit of about $550 billion. So as I said, net exports are negative. Hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to come in and ask.